Hi, everybody. Welcome back. This is Jen Kovic Pornick, eHealth Initiative. Delighted to have you back for our closing session this afternoon. Welcome. I'm going to give yeah. folks just a moment to log on because I know you're joining us from other uh, sessions. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I'm actually going to go ahead and give oh, a great introduction good. to our closing um, yeah. keynote today. I'm really, really excited that we have the opportunity and you all have the opportunity to hear from Roy Weathers today, who's just done some amazing work recently. And um, for those of you who don't know Roy, he's the CEO of the Action for Racial Equity and um, it, an incredible coalition of extremely talented executives from 125 companies that advance public policies and corporate engagement, addressing all kinds of societal challenges and, and trying to drive change. Just really incredible work. Um, Roy is also PwC's vice chair and a member of the US leadership team. He was recently named PwC societal engagement and policy solutions leader. Um, done incredible work. He's also serves on a number of boards, um, Carnegie Hall, Madison Square Boys um, and Girls Club, um, Pinking Turton um, Foundation, Riverdale Country School, lots of different groups, um, just an incredible background. And, and we're so delighted to have him here today to close us out. So Roy, I'm just gonna turn it over to you. And I wanna thank you again for taking yes. the time today to join us. We've had an incredible uh, two days. Jen, thank you so much. And I am really appreciative of the opportunity to close out a tremendous two day uh, conference. I understand we have well over 1500 participants uh, for the EHI session and what a tremendous cause and what a tremendous time to come together as a coalition, as participants, uh, as members of society that appreciate what digital health can do for us. Um, I want to echo all the thank yous that I'm sure you had uh, for your participation and engagement. Um, this notion of coming together around digital health tools um, that have the potential to bridge inequities in the current health system is incredibly powerful. This notion of, of, of equity as an achievable technology uh, that's powerful if you have proactive agents engaging is exactly what the conversation should be. And so I echo and I, and I, I share my thanks to all of the panelists. Um, what an incredible uh, array of talent and panelists that have shared incredible insight and engaged uh, with the many participants. And uh, we at the fellowship are just happy to be associated and connected. Um, as Jen said, my name is Roy Weathers. I have the great fortune of leading CEO Action for Racial Equity. Uh, and maybe let me just spend a couple of minutes sharing what CEO Action for Racial Equity is. Uh, our background um, is simple. Uh, we believe that the corporate community uh, should be and must be engaged in the conversation from a societal perspective. We also believe that the talent that we as a, as a corporate community leverage every day around policy, whether it's a sector or an industry or areas that we care about relative to our business, we should bring that talent to societal needs. And that's exactly why and how CEO Action was born just over a year ago. Um, I'll start by saying uh, we appreciate that we come at this work from a humble perspective. There are many, many in the audience today that have been working on many of these societal challenges such as digital health for decades. Um, we come at this work from a humble perspective with our sleeves rolled up. We bring what I say are two superpowers, our, our signatories, the corporate uh, organizations that are in communities that are connected from a policy perspective, um, that have resources to contribute and help. Uh, and we also uh, recognize our second um, uh, superpower, our fellows. Uh, as was said, we are 125 plus signatory organization uh, of the platform. Uh, our fellows, well over 200, represent the, the top executive talent from many of those organizations. We have medical doctors, we have uh, uh, plenty of lawyers, we have data scientists, we have folks from the, the diversity community. Uh, we have individuals, you know, my background, accounting, uh, consulting, we have it all. And every day we wake up focused on how can we make a difference from a policy perspective around societal matters. 
we centered our work around four areas, uh, education, public safety, healthcare, and economic empowerment. And I wanna come back to that healthcare one in a moment because it's, it's a really important tenet of our work. We set out to figure out which of the areas would give the most uh, and provide the most impact to the black community. Our notion around these four areas is because we believe that they are the foundation to a healthy, functioning, well-heeled society. We know that racism, we appreciate the notion that challenges that are arising from policy in these areas are creating barriers on a day in and day out basis. And so we set out to look at this through the lens of society, social justice change, rights, participation, equity, and, and access. We know that those are the four tenets that really drive this notion of, of equity, this notion of a, a well-heeled society. And so when we first started, we had well over 200 ideas and we were trying to grapple with where will we land? And for us, as you probably know now, telehealth was one of our uh, main areas. It is part of our portfolio of eight policies that we look to. And when I think about telehealth and when I think about the fellowship and the work we do, there are several areas, there are four exact areas that we wanna make sure we're making a difference in. First, eliminate inequitable restrictions, barriers, coverage and coverage for comprehensive telehealth services. Promote and amplify data that demonstrates the impact of equitable health care and expansion through telehealth. We wanna partner just as we're doing now with EHI. Uh, we wanna partner and advocate for us specifically the black community to ensure culturally competent and user-centered telehealth design and implementation. And last, but equally important, is we wanna help with the education and the engagement of patient and providers on this digital health literacy journey. When you think about digital health, we saw with COVID and we saw with the shutdown of not only this country, but around the world, the need for innovation as it relates to health. And what we saw was a willingness to try new things. Now, for many of us in the audience, it's not new, but for many, it was new. Also, what we saw was the level of acceptance. Also, what we saw was the ability to bridge, the ability to get healthcare in neighborhoods and communities where it was not before. And for us, we cannot leave that alone. We cannot take for granted, and I, I submit to you, we cannot take for granted that because the tools are there, because the obvious connection and the bridging is there, that it will happen. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, our area is policy. We focus at the federal, state, and the city level on policy implementation, policy amplification, policy modification, where the racial equity component is not where it needs to be. The telehealth is clearly one of those areas that we've settled on. I like to use this phrase, skip the line. When you find those opportunities, when you find those areas that allow us from a societal perspective to skip the line in terms of the many challenges, for example, our healthcare system um, deals with on a day in day out basis. When you think about the individuals that are in communities that are long distances from adequate competent care, when you think about communities that lack culturally related care, Telehealth, digital health is the clear answer. And so I'm thrilled today to be part of uh, our fellowship and to be partnering and working alongside many of you, particularly EHI, as we develop our mission, as we focus on the areas that will make a difference. We appreciate that it will be challenging. Our signatories, the many corporations, and I would encourage you to uh, go to our website and, and see a bit more about what we're doing. But we're backed by organizations, corporations that appreciate that they have a role in driving change and creating sustainable solutions. 
And so what I would ask you to do is not take this for granted. I would ask that you take all of the learnings, all of the insight that came from this conference, and, and there was a lot to be, to be taken in, and you leverage it in your day in and day out op journey. There are many ways to do that. For us, it's policy. For us, it's collaboration. For us, it's bridge building. But for you, it may be inside your organization. Uh, one of the things that we also know is many of our organizations embrace telehealth in a real way because it was the only tool that we had. And so, as I like to say, what's good for the significant majority of us is good for those who are less fortunate. It's good for those who who deal with restrictions, who deal with barriers, who deal with challenges because of geo uh, uh, restrictions, because of, of, of economic restrictions. And so I would ask you as you go about your day to day to think about ways that you can amplify this, to think about ways that you can promote this notion of digital health. Think about ways that you can be an example for those that are wondering about digital health. I'll say, as part of our work, we've come to appreciate that what might be obvious to many of us, it's not so obvious to some. We know that there are conversations amongst policymakers that wonder, does digital health create additional divides? Does it create additional barriers? Does it create additional inequities? And while we'll all admit there's no perfect solution, what we know, what we know is innovation, technology, the tools that we have combined with education and continuing to learn and to innovate is the answer. It is the answer. While there's no perfect solution, it is the answer. So we are steadfast on this journey. I'm so proud, if I could say, of the fellows for CEO Action for Racial Equity. Uh, when they mentioned this conference, the energy and enthusiasm that they had around participating and engaging and helping out any way they can uh, really came through to me. Um, and they asked me, and my background is obviously not in health. Um, I'm in consulting uh, at the firm, but I was, I was overjoyed to have an opportunity to just say thank you. Uh, overjoyed to have an opportunity to say, we're here with you in this bridge building and this journey. And last but not least, I would ask us all not to take it for granted. Uh, there's lots of work to be done. But the, the outcome on the other side of advancing digital health, advancing telehealth throughout society will be tremendous. Our health is one of the foundational components of a well-being society. And so I thank you for the opportunity to spend time with you today. Again, I echo all that was said uh, relative to the panel and the participants. Um, we're here. We're excited in terms of where we're going. The notion of health is something that all sides, no matter which side you, 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 uh, you come from, what perspective you have is clear. Uh, health is an important component uh, for this country and access to, to competent, culturally caring health is the solution. And so with that, I thank you. I thank you for allowing us to go on this journey with you. And with that, I'll turn it back over to um, Juana Dickinson. Hi, thank you, Roy. Thank you for that. That is the perfect closing. And I want to thank you for so graciously accepting our invitation to give our closing note. I think you took us out on an absolute perfect emotional note and just ties us all together. When we started this journey two days ago, Dr. McKee posed the question, what can we do to support health equity? And Roy, you just answered that question. There's a lot of work that we can do together. And there are a lot of things that we should be thinking about with health equity. It's definitely not a one person lift. We all have to come together to do this and we have to be dedicated and innovative and just, and stay the course. So for that, I do wanna thank you, Roy, for joining us. Thank you so much. Absolutely, absolutely. And with that, I would also like to thank our speakers. We've had more than 60 speakers over the past couple of days. We've had more than a thousand, almost 1,500 attendees for this two-day Digital Health Equity Summit. So that tells me that there are 1,500 plus people that appreciate not only what we're talking about, but have learned a lot. And I hope that I, I hope that you've you've walked away with with a number of lessons. We've also had an amazing team behind us that has has put this together. I would be remiss if I didn't mention them. 
Um, I, along with, with the rest of my team, uh, we've worked really hard to bring together some content that we, that we hope is, is inspiring and informative and very influential. I've been on a couple of panels before, but if you haven't seen me, I am Wynne Dixon. I'm the Director of Programs and Strategy at EHI, which is why I'm so excited about this, this summit. And I'm so excited and, and sad at the same time to close it because I feel like there's so much more that we could be talking about and we've only scratched, we've only scratched the surface. But if you take nothing away from these two days, I just wanna tell you three things. The real core of the summit has really been around three messages. It's about education, engagement, and empowering, engaging partners in the community and the providers, empowering patients with relevant tools to, to access healthcare and connecting them with culturally competent providers, educating, educating providers on how they can deliver better care, educating policymakers on where the needs are, educating patients on where they can find the help that they need and where we can ask questions and how we can all come together. Digital health equity, we have to educate, empower, and engage. And with that, I do want to, um, again, I know it's been a long two days. I just want to say a few more words and then I will, I will close this. If you've also picked up some of the other key, key terms, it's really about innovation. Um, technology is just a tool, but it's only as good as the people who use it. And ensuring that that tool is accessible to all and actually meets people where they are, that is so very important. So while we're being innovated, let's think about what's the need that we're actually trying to solve. And let's not stop at um, what we could see and what we can touch. We have to think beyond that and be very, very, very proactive. Partnership, we have to work together. Government, private sector, public sector, community, patient advocate groups, we all have to work together to, to achieve health equity. Accountability, we're all accountable as healthcare stakeholders to ensure that there's a system that is, that is equitable and accessible and affordable and provides the quality of healthcare that people deserve and that they expect to receive. Most importantly, I think number one, it's trust. Without trust, there is no health equity. Absolutely, it cannot happen. There has to be trust between providers and the patients in health IT and all of the, the landscape that, that's coming together. So those are my closing marks. Um, again, I do wanna thank everybody for joining. If you missed any of the sessions or you wanna tell your friends about this amazing summit that you attended over the past two days, the recordings for these sessions will be available on Whova, which is the app that you use to access the summit. It will be available tomorrow and you have up to 90 days to, um, to look at those recordings. So please feel free to go back and view the recordings and tell your colleagues and your friends about this amazing content that you heard about. And we're also going to be sending out a survey afterwards. Please let us know how we did. If there are topics that you want us to talk about in the future, please do. EHI, we're known for our, um, for our content and for our webinars and for being educational and engaging and informative. And this is just, again, this is just the beginning. We're just scratching the surface. So please let us know how we did. And also feel free to reach out and let us know if there's, if there's something else that you want us to talk about. Um, we can be reached at info, I-N-F-O, at ehidc.org and we'll put that in the chat so that you can reach out to us um, and I think with that that's it again I want to say thank you to everyone for joining us for the summit thank you for hanging in there for the, the past two days and hopefully we'll see you next year there will be a next year and hopefully it will be in person and then we'll have so much more to talk about again thank you very much and have a good evening goodbye